Today I want to talk a little bit about food security. Food security is an issue that I spend a lot of time around. I talk to a lot of people about food security and food insecurity. And in some ways it's a real issue, especially if you're in the, you know, you don't get, have a lot of income, uh, maybe you don't have access to land. You know, it's hard to say what your situation is, but as a concept, food security itself is actually completely ridiculous. Um, because, you know, I live on this street, which I'm walking down right now, and I'm doing that for illustration purposes. Um, I'm gonna walk by 30 or 40 lawns in the next few minutes, and each one of these lawns are absolutely insanely resource dependent elements. Michael Pollan said that the lawn is um, nature under totalitarian rule, I believe. And not only is, are each of these lawns monocultures, or pretty much close to monocultures, in fact, I'm gonna cross the street here because um, one of my neighbors actually just put in a, a plastic lawn. Don't tell him I'm looking at it. And um, I'm gonna pass by it right now. You can take a look. This blew me away. Um, and last year there was actually a, um, a dandelion Don't want to draw too much attention. Anyways, um, that's the perfect example of a resource intense system when you're covering your front yard with plastic. So these lawns take fossil fuel. Hopefully you can hear me over that airplane. Um, I'll say it again, these lawns take fossil fuel and so much in fact that if you took all the fossil fuel from all the lawn maintenance in the United States, it would be enough energy to drive a Hummer around the earth 21,000 times. That's a lot of fuel. In addition to that, they take up enormous amounts of water, ridiculous amounts of water. I wrote a blog on, all on this um, kind of concept, Food Not Lawns, I think it was called The Grass Isn't Greener. I'll put a link in the show notes below. And, you know, you look at all these houses, so not only are they monocultures, not only are they taking huge amounts of energy to, to, to cut them, but you can see all the downspouts in the background. These are all homes that are getting rid of water as fast as it's coming into their system. So we're then using potable chlorinated water to keep them alive. Now I did another calculation in that blog that I wrote, which was, if you took all the lawns in the United States, I couldn't find the stats for Canada, but the US is a, a good metric, if you will. If you took all the lawn in the United States and you converted it over to wheat, which we'd never do, we would turn it over to perennial polycultures, food forests, maybe small micro grazing systems, depending on where in the city you were. The US could grow all the calories that it needs on one crop of wheat, if you converted all the lawns over to wheat, which again, we would never do. So what that means, the reason I used wheat as a number in terms of calculating the capacity of, or what could be grown on that amount of acreage of lawn was that it's an easy number to figure out. You can assume some bushels, how many bushels per acre, you know how many acres of lawn there is, and so you can do a really quick calculation. We know that perennial systems polycultures that utilize biodiversity would actually outperform this. And not only would they outperform it in terms of caloric density, but they would also create more habitat for um, birds and small animals, um, insects, bees, all the, all the things that rely on these perennial polycultures. And so, most of us that have homes, whether we own or rent them, are spending money maintaining these lawns that aren't actually doing anything for us. And so if we just changed where our money was going and how we were managing these spaces in front of our houses, the food security conversation would quickly go away. 
basically what I'm getting at is as, as a species, we're actually degrading or we're force functioning our natural ecosystems where we've placed our houses to do less than they want to do. And just by stacking a few additional layers, fruit trees, nut trees, ground covers, all of which would be edible or medicinal, we could have a dramatic impact and food security would not even be a conversation anymore. And I'm not talking about spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, the money that you're currently spending, maybe not you, but the money that people are currently spending to make their lawns look pretty could easily be spent on changing the type of food that they grow. The other interesting thing about the whole food security conversation is that people don't really know how to grow their own food anymore. It's become so commonplace to just go to the grocery store and buy it. And this is ridiculous as well. Because I can tell you that as an engineer, I knew nothing about growing. And that was only 10 years ago. Um, and I'm not going to claim to be a complete expert at it, but I've learned a lot along the way. And the learning curve is pretty quick. It doesn't take that much to figure it out. And you start realizing pretty quickly how much you can grow in a really tiny space. So. I actually feel pretty optimistic that we can eliminate the conversation on food security, but we really just have to get rid of these lawns. We've got to harvest the water off the roofs, put it to productive use, keep it out of the storm sewer. We might even have a conversation about getting the storm water off the roads, which are another water source that we have access to for free. We can create habitat for the birds and the bees, and we can make our cities a gr the green Eden that we all want to live in. We just change a couple of the elements that we live around. Thanks so much for watching. If you found that interesting, make sure you subscribe. Check us out at vergepermaculture.ca. I'll put the blog, the Food Not Lawns blog, in the show notes below.